Whenever you eat food, the calories and nutrients that you take in are used to power your brain, repair broken down muscle tissue, and provide energy for all your cells and organs to function. However, once your basic energy needs are met, all the excess calories are then converted to fat, and that fat is stored around various places throughout the body, especially around the stomach, love handles, and hips. While this whole process does follow the basic principles of calories in versus calories out, there are certain foods that are more likely to lead to the overconsumption of calories and in turn more fat storage. So I want to go over nine of the most highly fattening foods that you should definitely limit if you want to maintain a flat stomach. And the number one food or beverage I should say that's highly fattening is soda. In fact, soda is a much bigger problem than you might think. The average American consumes 270 calories of added sugars every day. And most of these extra calories come from drinking soda. These liquid sugars end up adding up to almost 1,900 extra calories per week, which is about equivalent to the amount of calories you would burn if you ran 12 to 15 miles. So that's gonna be tough to burn off to say the least. And the problem with sugary calories is that they're ineffective at satisfying hunger, and so they typically end up going on top of the calories that people already consume. That's why people that drink soft drinks and other sugary beverages tend to weigh more than those who don't, as shown by two systematic reviews. So for that reason, I recommend that you replace soda with healthy beverages like sparkling water, tea, or coffee. You can also add some artificial sweeteners like stevia if you crave that sweet taste, because various studies show that substituting sugary foods and drinks with artificially sweetened alternatives lowers calorie intake and aids weight loss. And most human studies indicate that artificial sweeteners are generally safe when the maximum recommended amount isn't exceeded. So two to three packets of stevia per day should be fine, but don't go overboard as having too much can enhance your sugar cravings rather than help them. Next is beer. That's right, the term the beer belly exists for a reason because beer is one of those beverages that's most likely to cause you to gain excess pounds. There are a number of reasons why beer is likely to pack on weight. First of all, alcohol is converted to acetate in the body, mostly in the liver. And as acetate enters your blood, fat burning becomes highly suppressed throughout your entire body. As a result, the fatty acids that you eat are much more likely to be stored as body fat instead of being burnt off. On top of that, acetate itself can also be converted into fat. Another issue with drinking alcohol in general is that it's often paired with high fat junk foods like pizza or late night McDonald's trips. And the excess calories from drinking alcohol doesn't really fill you up at all. Contrary to protein, carbs, and fats, Alcohol doesn't suppress appetite, but instead, it may even increase it. For example, in a recent 2019 systematic review and meta-analysis, the researchers concluded that adults don't compensate properly for the amount of alcohol calories they take in by eating less. On the contrary, a relatively small amount of alcohol can lead to an increase in food consumption. Now, when you compare alcoholic drinks, beer happens to be one of the most likely alcoholic beverages to cause fat gain. This is because as a general rule of thumb, beer contains 150 calories per drink, while wine contains 125 per glass, and hard liquors contain about 100 per shot. Moving on, we have croissants. Now, croissants are tricky because they don't look that bad calorie-wise, but back in 1995, a group of researchers wanted to see which foods were most satiating. To do that, they evaluated 38 foods separated into six categories, fruits, bakery products, snacks, carb-rich foods, protein-rich foods, and breakfast cereals. Each of the foods was fed to groups of people in a portion size of about 240 calories. After that, the scientists took a satiety rating from the participants every 15 minutes over a total of 120 minutes. Then after 120 minutes, they were free to eat as much as they wanted from a standard range of foods and drinks. To evaluate how satiating each food was, the scientists calculated what they called the satiety response curve for each group, which they compared to white bread. White bread was given a satiety score of 100, which means that if a food scored higher than 100, it would be more satiating than white bread. And if it scored lower, it would be less satiating. Ultimately, the results indicated that out of the 38 foods they evaluated, croissants were found to be the least satiating. They scored 47 on the satiety index, making it less than half as satiating as white bread, which already is a low satiety food. In other words, if you eat croissants, it may be tough for you to control your calorie intake, which is why this food can be highly fattening. 
Now, if you're looking for an alternative carbohydrate to croissants, the study indicates that you may want to try potatoes as those were found to be seven times more satiating than croissants. Next, we have cookies. Cookies are most often made from ingredients that don't fill you up, like flour, sugar, and butter. Plus, they usually have other high-calorie, tasty ingredients like chocolate chips added as well. That's why cookies are highly fattening. For example, one study found that if overweight people eat two cups of watermelon daily, they generally end up consuming fewer calories than they were before, and over time, they lose fat. On the other hand, if people consume the same number of calories in the form of cookies, they tend to overeat and gain fat. Studies even show that cookie consumption is likely to significantly increase blood pressure and body fat. So if you want to lose weight, go for natural sweets like watermelon instead. Not only will that help you control your calorie intake, but it'll also leave you feeling fuller and you'll end up consuming a broad spectrum of beneficial micronutrients. Another sneaky high calorie food is cooking oil. Now, don't get me wrong, dietary fat is essential for health and cooking oils like avocado oil and olive oil offer a broad range of beneficial effects, but there is a problem. Cooking oils are the most calorically dense food group available while having only a minimal effect on satiety. Combine that with the fact that it's easy to use a lot more cooking oil than what's needed to cook foods and make them taste great. Using too much oil actually happens to be the number one way that cooking oils can become extremely fattening. For example, given that one tablespoon of olive oil has 119 calories, adding three of those to your daily meals means you'd end up consuming an extra 357 calories. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to avoid cooking oils, especially those that are healthy like avocado oil and olive oil, but it does mean that it's important to be careful with how much oil you use. An excellent tool that can help you with this is an oil mister it can significantly reduce the amount of oil that ends up in your pan. Of course, there are many ready-to-use cooking sprays that you can just buy at your grocery store, but generally, they're not ideal because they usually have highly processed and unhealthy vegetable oils like canola or rapeseed. Instead, I'd recommend buying a separate oil mister and then adding either avocado oil or olive oil yourself. Next, we have something that goes hand-in-hand -hand with beer, french fries. With a typical five ounce serving containing about 427 calories, french fries can definitely be considered a highly caloric junk food. Combine that with the fact that french fries usually come complete with the rest of your happy meal, like a double cheeseburger and a soda, and you'll see how you can easily add hundreds of extra calories on top of the french fries. Aside from the fact that french fries are highly caloric without filling you up, they also have another downside. They tend to come with a lot of salt. Now, sodium itself doesn't cause fat gain because it's actually calorie free, Although, on a side note, it can cause weight gain by forcing your body to retain more sodium in your cells, leading to an increase in overall water retention. But even if you're not concerned about water weight, sodium can in fact stimulate fat gain indirectly. This is because eating more salt can cause you to consume more calories, making you more likely to end up in a calorie surplus. For example, a 2009 study introduced what researchers called the salted food addiction hypothesis. They claim that salted foods could be addicting because they stimulate opioid and dopamine receptors in the brain. And the researchers also noted that not consuming as much salt could cause withdrawal symptoms. This is actually one reason why many people have strong cravings for junk food like french fries. Moving on to the next food, we can't forget about pizza. Pizza is highly fattening for the same reason that french fries are. It scores very high in fat, calories, and sodium. For example, a 12-inch pie of pizza, which is considered a medium-sized pie, has on average a whopping 1,835 calories. Now, I know it may come as a surprise, but when I was in college, I routinely saw people that would wolf down a whole medium pie to themselves after a night of drinking. Now, imagine that you wind up eating two of these medium pies throughout the week. Well, that would be just about enough calories to gain a whole pound of fat. On top of that, if you go for a night out and you add up the calories from a few too many beers, a 12-inch pizza, and a soda, you might eat more than those 3,500 calories in a single night. Which, like I said, it might sound completely crazy, but alcohol makes you do some completely crazy things. So either get better at managing your willpower after drinking or avoid these very high-calorie foods after a night out. Next, we have a food that you don't need alcohol to overconsume. I'm talking about peanut butter. Now, the thing is that peanuts aren't inherently bad. In fact, studies link peanut consumption to a reduced body weight and improved health. But 
The problem is that when it comes to peanut butter, it's very easy to eat a whole lot more calories than you would if you were eating regular peanuts. This is due to the fact that turning peanuts into peanut butter removes the chewing resistance that whole peanuts have. On top of that, many people love peanut butter and they like to spread it in a thick layer on top of their toast or on top of slices of apples. And that peanut butter adds much more calories to the toast or the apples than you might think. Sometimes it can even double or triple the amount of calories that you would consume if you just stuck with a plain apple or plain toast. One last issue with peanut butter is that most brands are commercially prepared, which often adds vegetable oils, sugars, and salt, all of which make the food tastier, but less satiating and higher in calories. So even though there's nothing wrong with the natural varieties of peanut butter, as long as you can ensure that you stay within your set caloric target, the problem is that eating too much peanut butter throughout the day could make it almost impossible to stay within the desired calorie range and cause fat gain. Finally, last but not least, we have potato chips. Over a 20 year period, scientists from the Harvard Medical School assessed over 120,000 men and women, and they looked at how particular changes in their lifestyle would influence their body weight over four year incremental intervals. And what they found was very interesting. The lifestyle change that was most strongly associated with gaining weight over a four year period was increasing the number of potato chips eaten. So why were potato chips so strongly associated with weight gain? Well, one reason is that they're very high in calories for the amount of volume they occupy in your stomach. 100 grams of potato chips contain on average a hefty 536 calories. But that's not all. Another important factor to note is that snacks like potato chips are typically paired with watching television or a movie, especially late at night. And since people tend to eat a lot more calories when eating distracted, especially when they do so in the evening, it's no wonder that researchers found increasing potato chip intake tends to cause weight gain. So those are the nine foods that you shouldn't necessarily be afraid of, but you should definitely limit in your diet if you want to get lean and maintain that lean look. Of course, all of these foods can be included in moderation, but be careful because it's easy to go overboard and gain body fat in the process. That about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to skip all the trial and error that comes with losing body fat and packing on muscle, try my six-week shredding program. It provides a done-for-you step-by-step plan that details exactly what you should be eating and exactly what you should be doing at the gym only three days per week to get into the best shape of your life. With a full exercise library, a recipe book, and a dedicated personal coach included, losing weight and burning fat is made easier than ever, and that's why so many of my clients are losing at least 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only six short weeks. To find out more, click the link below in the description, or you can just visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. See you guys soon.